Hi everyone, this is Chris Craig with Uninet, and this session focuses on the background data setup for resource scheduling, skills management, and budgeting and planning into the future. Uh, there's this follow-on video that goes into the usage of the data that we're going to talk about here. Um, this is more of the background data setup, and while it is somewhat mundane, it's important to understand where the different uh, fields are coming from. So uh, when someone authenticates into Uninet, it will identify who they are, and based on their user privileges or their roles, it will dynamically generate a dashboard type view. So Uninet is a role-based system. You can limit who can view information versus who can edit information who has access to which clients, which projects, which departments, which employees. And you can make the dashboards as simple or as sophisticated as you want. Um, you'll see many charts and reports on this dashboard. You'll see zero charts and a few reports on the left-hand side on this dashboard. Um, so each of the menu items across the top represents a different dashboard, and you can put different charts and different reports on the various dashboards. And I'll make this a little bit bigger for you. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so Uninet is designed for matrix-based organizations where we have multiple people working on multiple projects. So in that vein, we have the people side of the matrix and we have the project side of the matrix. So on the people side of the matrix, you can set up your organizational hierarchy and you can have as many levels of uh, ancestors and descendants as you want. The point of setting up this hierarchy is really twofold in that one, you can report based on the hierarchy. So if you wanted to say, show us everything for the consulting services group, you could do that. Um, two is you can restrict access within the hierarchy. So, for example, if someone is a resource planner for consulting services and they wanted to request someone from this GS cyber group, um, they may have to put in a resource request to get that person um, because they would only be able to plan the people, particularly in their group. And again, you can restrict someone to having access to whatever levels of the tree as you want, and they could access the entire tree if you wanted them to have access to the entire tree. So basically you set up this organizational hierarchy and then people will belong to different uh, segments of the, the org tree. A few other background items on the people side of the matrix. You define a business week. The business week is how Uninet determines someone's capacity for a future time frame. It looks at their business week. So you can have as many different business weeks as you want, and then people can belong to different business weeks. And that's, again, how Unit will determine their capacity or availability into the future. You can also define a skills matrix, and you can create whatever skill categories or skill types that you want. So, for example, language could be a skill type or programming could be a skill type. And then underneath these skill types, you can have more granular skills. So underneath uh, language, we have Arabic, German, Mandarin, Spanish. Underneath programming, we have .NET, C++, Java. You can also have skill levels or proficiencies. So again, when you're planning someone, you can look at the, the availability from the business week and also the skill sets that are defined here. You can also set up locations for individuals. And some customers will use states, some will use regions, some will use zip codes. Uh, you, you can define a location to be whatever you want it to be. Um, you'll also set up labor categories. And labor categories are similar to skills, but they're slightly different in that labor categories can have rates associated with them, along with effective dates for rate escalation purposes. So this is the list of master labor categories. And when we get into a project um, on the other side of the matrix, we'll see how we can have project labor categories um, that have rates associated with them as well and how you can even override those rates um, depending on the project or the task. All right, so if we go look at a list of people, this is a list of all the people in the system. And again, they belong to one of the uh, organizations that we set up in the organizational hierarchy. And if we go into a person's profile, 
these are all the fields around a person. So first name, last name, email address. This is where you set the business week to the person. This is where you set the location to the person. This is where you define the skills that are associated with the person's profile. And some of our customers allow their end users to specify their own skills. Some of our customers have management set the skills for the employee. So it's really up to you as far as how you want to set that up. This is also where you define the organizational access for someone. So, for example, if someone is a resource planner, that's their role in the system. They're a resource planner. You can say they can plan, you know, only the people in the consulting services group or the government services group and its children, or they can plan across the entire organization. So again, this is where you're restricting who has access to what. Now, all of this information can easily be dumped to Excel, uh, manipulated, and then re-imported back into Uninet. So it probably looks like a bunch of gibberish on your screen now, but if we open this up in Excel, uh, this is how it looks in Excel. And then, you know, if we wanted to do any type of mass change, say we wanted to update everybody's cost rate, we could come in here, we could update the cost rate column, we'd go back to Uninet and we'd do an import and we'd bring that data back into Uninet. So you can see we can do this for any of the major objects in Uninet, major objects being customers, projects, vendors, rates, etc. cetera. Um, but in this case, we just import that file and it would do all the updates in mass instead of having to go through one by one. You can also schedule this to run automatically uh, behind the scenes, uh, whatever frequency you want using our integration uh, management utility, which is basically a scheduled API into Uninet. All right, so that's basically the, the people side of the matrix. The other side of the matrix is the project side of the matrix. So on the project side of the matrix, you can define different project statuses and you can, again, create whatever statuses you want. Um, you can you know, have pipeline statuses. So some people use Uninet for their sales forecasting CRM solution where they you know, put in pipeline statuses and then they associate probability percentages with those statuses and then run weighted forecasts based on the probability percentage. Um, again, you, this nomenclature is completely definable um, to you. Um, you can also have plan sets so our customers use plan sets for scenario planning or what if analysis, as well as quarterly reforecasting. So an easy example of the plan sets is something like this, where under the umbrella of one opportunity or one project, you could actually have multiple different scenarios and then you could compare the scenarios against each other. You know, which scenario is going to take the longest to finish? Well, that's scenario one or which scenario is going to produce uh, the least margin? Well, that's scenario three. So you can look at these different scenarios of how you've allocated your resources and see, um, you know, expected duration, expected profitability, etc. cetera. Um, projects also have user defined fields and people also have user defined fields. So if we're not tracking something you want to track, you can create whatever user defined fields you want in the system. Um, so you can have user defined fields for projects and people. So just like we listed out the, uh, the people before, now we're listing out all the projects. And you'll notice here, um, one customer could have many projects associated with it. Customer one has four, customer two has six. Those projects are also owned by those internal organizations in the company's hierarchy. So when we're looking at reports, we can filter the data in a variety of ways uh, by customer, by department, et cetera. There's also internal projects down here so if you're planning you know, training or vacation or sick or admin, um, you can have all your, your internal projects down here. Um, if we go into an individual project, just like I showed you a person profile, this is a project profile, and this can also be uh, exported and ingested from Excel. Um, but these are all the fields around a project. So this is um, where you have the tasks underneath the project and you can have any number and level of tasks and subtasks. And there's basically four different ways you can get the tasks into Uninet. You can either use the Uninet web interface and just add the tasks directly through the web interface. That's one. Um, you can copy. So if you have standard tasks or standard work breakdown structures you do across all projects, there's a copy feature that will allow you to copy a template into Uninet. Um, you could also import from Microsoft Project 
So if you have a Microsoft project plan, you could feed that into Uninet. Uninet, most customers now will do everything directly in Uninet. And then if their customer wants to see the data in Microsoft project for whatever reason, they'll export the data back out to Microsoft project. So most customers do all the, the, the project task management in Uninet. Um, and then you could also ingest from Excel as well. So in addition to tasks, we talked about how you could have different rates for different people. So this is just an example showing you that um, Chad user is an administrator at $50 an hour on the first task here, brand strategy. The same guy is a designer at 103.45 an hour on code. And again, we can either use the person rate, we can use the labor category rate, which will change based on the labor category we select, or we can actually just type in our own rate if we have an override rate here. And this comes into play when you get more into the, you know, well, it comes into play certainly when you get into revenue forecasting and margin forecasting and also for billing and revenue recognition. All right. Um, in addition to the labor component, you can also plan out expenses or other direct costs on different projects. So basically you pick the project, whether it's direct or indirect. You have a list of projects you can plan here, a list of expense types that are valid for that project, and then you can basically plan that out into the future. And then in the next video, uh, we'll focus on resource planning as, as well as bringing into account the, the expense plans as well as the, the indirect costs. So if you have you know net margin forecasting based on fringe, overhead, G&A, that sort of thing, you can, you can see that as well. Um, but it will also talk about looking out into the future and we always say you know you can't run your business by looking in the rearview mirror you have to look out into the future and answer questions on who's overbooked who's underbooked uh, when do resources become available which is sort of what this screen is showing um, are projects adequately staffed what is the revenue forecast what is the cost forecast into the future if you have any questions uh, please contact us at 703-689-9440 or uninet.com or you can email info at uninet.com. Thank you very, very much for your time. And um, again, the next video in the, in the session would be the, the resource planning, uh, resource scheduling, budgeting and planning usage uh, video. Thank you.